letter C, 2013-2985. Cecilia Cruz versus Richard Miranda, City Manager, and Roger Randolph, City Clerk. I'll take the appearances, please. This is a motion hearing and also a hearing on request for motion to show cause. Bill Reisner uh, for the plaintiff and sitting next to me is Cecilia Cruz. Good morning, Your Honor. Dennis McLaughlin for the city attorney. Uh, Mr. Randolph is present in court and Mr. Miranda is on a uh, five minute uh, phone call notice. Mr. Reisner has subpoenaed both of them. All right. First of all, we have a camera in court this morning. There was a request uh, to film these proceedings that was made last week. It was timely made pursuant to Rule 122. I understand notice was provided to all parties concerning the fact that there was a request by a media group to film. And um, there was no objection received. And of course, Rule 122 presumes filming uh, by media subject to limitation if there are appropriate reasons for doing that. So I've gone ahead and granted leave for these proceedings to be filmed, and I can see we do have one camera in the courtroom this morning. Uh, I also do need to confirm, though, sir, can I get your name? John Roberts Brakey. And Mr. Brakey, my understanding is that you're willing to share or pool any feed from these proceedings. Absolutely. And you have the capability of doing so. Yes, I do. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. All right, uh, before, well, we've got a couple of motions the city filed in connection with the matter. Um, there's a motion to dismiss, pursuant to Rule 12b-1, which is lack of subject matter jurisdiction, 12b-2, which is lack of personal jurisdiction, 12b-6, which is failure to state a claim upon which relief will be granted. Uh, there's also a motion for protective order, but it looked to me like that might be moved because the time has come and gone for the depositions and they didn't occur. Uh, so, all right. Welcome, you're on the motions. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, the protective order I put in um, because there was a notice of deposition to Ms. Uh, Messrs. Randolph and Miranda, and I'll explain why those did not occur. I will just get it on the record. Part of my explanation. Uh, Your Honor, um, Ms. Cruz has sued the defendants in the wrong capacity, and she's never amended her complaint. So, strange as it may seem, I don't think there's a case before you right now. Um, when she sued them in individual capacity, and she said it right in her complaint, uh, right in the body of the complaint, four problems arose. First of all, um, Mr. Randolph and Mr. Miranda have never been served personally or through substituted service. Uh, 4.2D would require that there either be personal or substituted service on someone who's sued individually. Now, I'm sure that Mr. Reisner is going to try to tell you that he served the complaint on the city clerk's office, which I agree he did. And if he had sued the city, or if he had sued Mr. Randolph and Mr. Miranda in official capacity, that would be sufficient uh, under 4.2, excuse me, I've said 4.2 and I meant 4.1, 4.1D and 4.1I. But it's not sufficient when you have uh, an individual that you're suing in an individual capacity. I noticed in his response to my motion, he kept saying, well, I can sue an individual or I can sue the city. He's not getting it. He's suing in the wrong capacity. And so that they never having been served, Mr. Randolph is right here, but he's never been formally summoned into court. He's never been given the opportunity to get counsel. I don't represent him individually. And we don't have a case. Uh, that's true of Mr. Um, Miranda also. The, the only uh, thing I would say is if your file indicates there's been any personal or substituted service, I will withdraw that objection. But I am not aware of any. Both Mr. Randolph and Mr. Miranda have told me they have not been served personally. So that's problem one. And I think it's kind of makes everything 
uh, else moved, uh, to, at least today. Um, one thing I would like to ask, add, Your Honor, may I, may I approach the bench? I just want to add one thing. I don't know whether we want this marked or whether I can just quote it to you. Um, one is this? No, I'm giving him a copy right now. And uh, all I want to say from it is, if you look at the second page uh, under section 12.10, it's uh, the last sentence of that last complete paragraph. It says, this type of substituted service cannot be made at non-dwelling locations such as an office. So if there was going to be substituted service on Mr. Randolph or Mr. Miranda, there needed to be uh, service at their home. It, putting it into the city clerk's office was not enough. And this is uh, Arizona Practice, Civil Trial Practice, Volume 2, Second Edition, by Mr. McAuliffe and uh, Ms. Wall. Second problem. Uh, there's, there's no subject matter jurisdiction when he sues people in an individual capacity on a 39-121.02 uh, special action. The point of that statute is he says we need, the city needs to give him records that he's entitled to. And the only way the city is going to give him records is through persons acting in their official capacity. So once again, if he's sued in an individual capacity, there's nothing that the city can do for him and there's no subject matter jurisdiction because that's not the kind of action you have under that statute. I noticed in your... Uh briefing, you cited the case for the proposition that if there's no, that the court could decline jurisdiction. Yes, that's the late case, right? right? But then in the next couple of sentences, you went on to, to say, must decline jurisdiction. And, um, or at some point, does, does, um, when does could become must? I mean, because the statute, the, the wording of the statute says that, that the plaintiff can sue an officer. Right. But he didn't sue an officer. He sued an individual. He sued, he, he said uh, Mr. Randolph and Mr. Miranda, he gave them their titles in the caption. But then he specific, she, excuse me, specifically says, uh, I'm suing them in their individual capacity. So they can sue the city or they can sue an officer. Is that a jurisdiction issue, or is that an issue that goes to the substance of whether Mr. Reiser's client is, in the, is entitled to the relief? I think it's both, but I'm, however you want to focus it, I think is fine with me. Because I'm, I'm not uh, in a position to say absolutely that could becomes must in this, in this situation. Um, I do think on the 12b6 basis, which I'll get to, you also can deny relief, because there's no claim. Uh, there's no way that an individual sued can give the relief that's requested here. The, there has to be an officer acting in an official capacity who can give the relief. And he specifically said, I'm not suing in that capacity. So two or six, uh, or excuse me, or one or six, um, I think it's, they, they both are, are in there, but however you want to decide that. Oh no, that's fine. You're you're fine. Uh, I was I'm keeping in, in good order here. So that was subject matter jurisdiction, and then the personal jurisdiction is related to the lack of service. I don't think you have personal jurisdiction over either of these defendants. They haven't been formally hailed into court. They haven't had the opportunity to individually get attorneys. And um, you may be asking, well, why did I file an answer? And I have two answers to that question. One well, is... I was going to ask you why you filed a motion to dismiss if your client's not a party. Well, my, I filed it based on that answer which said specifically, if I may, um, my second paragraph of my answer. When, when I'm served with a complaint, I tend to want to file an answer. Particularly in an OSC situation where I don't know what relief may be granted essentially in default if I'm not in the case somehow. But what I said is, um, based on the allegations in two, this is paragraph two, paragraph two, 
Plaintiff's complaint facially fails to state a claim upon which relief can be granted and should be immediately dismissed pursuant to ARCP 12b-6. Plaintiff's complaint does not name the city as a defendant, and while her caption purports to name the city clerk and city manager as defendants using their official titles, she then specifically states in the body of her complaint, paragraph 2, that those defendants, quote, are sued in their individual capacity, end quote. Yet plaintiff's allegations concern only the defendant's actions as city officials, that is, in their official capacity. She alleges nothing that the defendants have done individually, and the defendants as individuals rather than as city officials cannot release or withhold the city's public records, which is the focus of her lawsuit. The remainder of the answer is presented without prejudice to defendant's position that the complaint fails to state a claim and should be dismissed on that basis. And then I go on to answer. So then I follow that up with the motion to dismiss on actually all three of these grounds, subject matter jurisdiction, personal jurisdiction, and failure to state a claim. Um, I think uh, based on lack of service and on those three, there's no basis to be here today. And I say that with great respect to the court. Mr. Reisner, I don't think, has given you a, a case that you have jurisdiction over. Yeah, it's, um, the public records laws are executed by individuals. The city manager has individual responsibilities, which I cited uh, in the uh, uh, complaint. The city clerk has individual responsibilities as city clerk and as, uh, as does Ms. Miranda, as, uh, uh, you know, city manager. And the request for records was delivered to and addressed to city manager Richard Miranda. He's a person. And the duties that he has to comply and to give records are duties that he carries out as a person who occupies a certain position within the city. So he was sued as Richard Miranda. The uh, statute gives a, a distinct choice of suing the uh, person who has control of the documents and the duty and who's not turning them over or suing the, uh, the, the entity such as the without protest and signed and there's uh, it should be in the file and acceptance of service where the uh, clerk, in fact, Mr. Roger Randolph, the Tucson City, city Clerk, accepted service of uh, of his complaint. So I guess, you know, the argument is Roger Randolph accepted service of the complaint, suing Roger Randolph, but gosh, uh, you should have gone to Roger Randolph's home to sue Roger Randolph, who's the city clerk who accepted service of the complaint. Um, you know, it's, uh, uh, it's I, I, you know, think that when the city clerk holds itself out and accepts service for uh, uh, the city uh, manager that really they should be, uh, you know, should be held to that. Uh, we had a, uh, well, that's, uh, uh, we have, uh, I've got in my file two acceptance of services, so. You're looking at the May 29 acceptance of service. Yeah, and, and you know, frankly, uh, uh, normally uh, I like to proceed by acceptance of service because uh, there's not fees later that the city has to kick back to send a process over to round up anyone. Uh, I strongly suggest probably Rich Miranda doesn't want someone uh, uh, knocking on his door at the home when he gets out of the swimming pool and when they can take it to uh, uh, to uh, to City Hall, and this is profoundly a case involving uh, an important uh, public issue, uh, things that the uh, city uh, has uh, uh, 
received a, a number of letters. I, uh, you know, this, this is a case I set up in advance uh, with the city days for depositions, and then they filed a protective order at the end. Uh, it's, I, I think, a bit uh, unseemly to use uh, what I think is uh, really sharp practice by having the, the city clerk accept uh, a complaint and then say, uh -huh, it, it, it didn't come to my house. Uh, we've sued these individuals because they have individual responsibilities. Um, you know, that's, that's, that's the bottom line, and those responsibilities come from their position and what they're to carry out, and the statute says we can do that. We'll often get an acceptance of service here that says the Office of the City Clerk of Tucson, etc., hereby accepts service on behalf of City Manager Richard Miranda and Roger Randolph, Tucson City Clerk. Doesn't that do it? It would if they were sued officially, Your Honor, if, they were, if it was the city or if they were sued in their official capacity. But Mr. Reisner sued them in an individual capacity. So we can't, we can't accept service for every individual that's out there, whether it's Roger Randolph or Richard Miranda or any other individual. Um, if he, if he had sued us, in, as I say, as a city, or if he had sued them in an official capacity, no question about it, we accept it. But he can't, he can't sue them in an individual capacity and then drop them at Mr. Randolph's office and say he served them. That's not what ARCP 4.1D and I say. touched on this briefly a moment ago. The motion for protective order is not issued at this point. Is that correct? Correct. There's no protective order. I, I wanted, I did want to say, and thank you for reminding me, the reason, as I said, that Mr. Uh, Miranda and Mr. Randolph didn't show up for depositions was they'd never been served. There's, they weren't summoned to the court. Normally on a notice you wouldn't need to uh, have a subpoena as well, but in this case they had not been served, so they weren't before the court individually. That was our position. So they didn't show up. And I, I didn't, at that point, I didn't want discovery going on uh, while we decided the motion to dismiss issues. And it may be moved at this point. All right. Now let's talk, uh, I'll tell you what I'm thinking of doing. Um, in a couple of minutes, I think I'm going to step off and consider the motion in chambers for a few minutes and then come back out and tell you. That's where I'm leaning right now. Now, before I do that, if we go ahead with the hearing today, what are we talking about, Mr. Reisner? Well, actually, Mr. McLaughlin, in the case law, you've got the burden. So, what are you talking about? Thank you, Your Honor. Um, we had a request for public records from Ms. Cruz on, I believe it was May 12th. Don't, uh, if, if I get the dates wrong. I've read, I've read all the documents. Great. I know that it's basically, there are three significant dates in May, so. Right. We made two releases based on that request. We made one on May 24th, where we withheld a significant amount of material on the basis of best interests of the state, still in negotiation with Grand Canyon University. June 21st, by then, El Rio Golf Course is off the table as a site. So we went back through, we made another release, which was on a disc. We replicated the May 24th, and then we had a lot of additional material that we released, stuff that had come in from parks, etc. So we've made two releases, and we're down to seven documents that we're aware of. Mr. Reisner has four, count them, four city officials under subpoena for this hearing. I don't see any reason we need testimony for this hearing. I've got seven documents. I'm ready to have you do an in-camera inspection if you would like to. Two of them are. No, I don't want to. I don't want to hear the whole argument now. You've sure. Got, you've got the city clerk here. You've got the city manager available. Yes. And uh, Mr. Reisner, do you anticipate any witnesses in addition to what Mr. McLaughlin has just said in terms of city officials? Just let me make and no, really why don't I use this as an opportunity? As I understand the law, and I've read uh, both of the cases cited by both of you. In Miranda, but far more than the bulk. Uh, as I understand the law, there is a presumption, this comes principally from the Carlson case, there's a presumption of public access, 
That presumption can be rebutted, if you will, by the party, the public entity that seeks to protect the documents, um, has the burden of proving that the release of the documents should not be subject to the presumption uh, because it would be contrary to public interest to do so. Uh, and it's a balancing test, and that's discussed in several cases, uh, none of which apply exactly to these facts. So is that is that an accurate, very general recitation of where we are? From the city's position, yes, Your Honor. And if we need to, we have a, an affidavit from Mr. Casalinas that I will file that will say essentially what you just said. <laughs> Mr. Reisner, is that your understanding as well? Uh, not. Is that the test? Is that the standard at this point? They've got to come out and prove that on a balancing test uh, <coughs> that they can rebut the presumption of public access. Right. Right. Okay. And, you know, they didn't participate in any discovery, so I'm not certain what <coughs> witnesses I would put on. It depends on what testimony they put on. All right, and we're set for two days, aren't we? I believe we are. All right. Your Honor, I, I had no idea it was going to be that long. I didn't realize it was well, set. I don't, know, I, I don't know that it has to be that long. I'm just telling you what it's, yeah. what it's set on the calendar. Right. Based on what you all told me this morning, I would be surprised if it was that long. So, and I suspect you would as well. All right, we will stand in recess for 15 minutes, and I'll consider that. Thank you. Thank you. Considered the arguments of counsel, I've considered the briefs, and um, I'm going to deny the motion to dismiss. Let me explain briefly my reasoning. I think the statute, plain language of the statute, lets the plaintiff sue the individual officers, or sue the officers, Mr. Miranda and uh, Mr. Randolph. So I think, uh, I don't think there's a subject matter jurisdiction issue. And it doesn't, uh, it doesn't portend or give you any clue what a ruling might be on, on some other argument related to the effect of, as I intimated earlier. I just don't think it's a subject matter jurisdiction issue. So I don't know whether there's any great import ultimately to how the two gentlemen were denominated as defendants, but I don't, I don't think it's subject matter jurisdiction. On personal jurisdiction, um, I noticed, Mr. McLaughlin, that you answered, not only is there an acceptance of service, that acceptance of service, which is in the court file, is not qualified. It doesn't say that it's limited to um, their official capacity. Um, it says that uh, the office of the city clerk of Tucson, Arizona, hereby accepts service on behalf of city manager Richard Tucson City Clerk for the following documents, and then it goes through and identifies the documents. It doesn't qualify that acceptance. City cited Rule 4.1D, and it goes through service of summons upon individuals, and the last example that it gives is, or by delivering a copy of the summons and of the pleading to an agent authorized by appointment or by law to receive service of process. I think the acceptance of service falls under that provision. And uh, there's also a note actually in the McAuliffe book, which I use quite a lot, uh, that such agency can be implied from the circumstances. And uh, I think these circumstances demonstrate that there's an acceptance of service. Then you come to uh, the other aspect of personal jurisdiction. This would often, I was struck by the fact that the city actually did answer for the two gentlemen top of the answer, it says that there was no mention of personal jurisdiction 
or no mention of inadequacy of service and process in the answer. And uh, then there was a motion to dismiss filed. First of all, um, the city clerk, I, I simply disagree with your honor, and I, I'm, I understand your ruling, but I want to make clear that the city clerk can't accept service on for individuals. It's just not how it works. Uh, as far as the waiver, I don't believe I waive 12b2. I may be wrong on that, um, or 12b1. I think I have to do 12b1. 12b1 you cannot waive. Right. 12b1 is it's always there. unwaivable, 12b6 is unwaivable. Right. So I, I, I agree. The, um, as far as the uh, waiver on uh, service of process, um, we were never in this case, according to his own complaint. He was sued individually. The city was never in the case. Okay. And, I, and I'm going to stop you. I, I think I understand your argument. I think the pleadings, however, demonstrate that the city answered on behalf of the two defendants. Intending to do so on an official, unofficial capacity, and I understand what you're saying. And there is an acceptance of service which has no such qualification in it, accepting service for them. So, uh, per, on the personal jurisdiction aspect, that is denied as well. And on 12b-6, that's denied as well, failure to state a claim. So the motion to dismiss is denied. And any opening statements?